Okay, finally we can start. Okay, uh, I will be speaking about text recognition part. And what about text recognition? What is it? As Oles already said, it's about taking this already cropped image. In most cases, Oles didn't said because like there are different architectures when people do like end-to-end -end task when they localize and recognize at once. But we are speaking about the other ones when people just localize by one architecture and then they took another one to recognize. Okay, I'm speaking about this recognition part and uh, what we have as input to our architecture is about like we have these patches, I would say, uh, that uh, have some text on it or maybe they don't have any text on it. We will find out by recognition part. And then we need to, to map our input sequence like we can say that image is a sequence of pixels to our output sequence. The main problem of this task is that uh, we can have uh, these input images of the same size, but the words on these images could be different. Like it could be like five, uh, five letters long or six letters long, but these patches could be very similar and of the same size. Okay, so. Let's define our problem. We have this input image, like I will <coughs> show all examples on this image. It's like same word Oko, like just brand. Um, and uh, uh, we have some known magic that's gonna help us. And we have the output sequence Oko. Okay, so like, this is like, uh, most of machine learning is all about this unknown magic. Like we have something on inputs, have some unknown magic and have our output like, okay, and we have a lot of money. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna speak about uh, how people approach this problem, what architectures they use and like how do they use them. Okay. We're gonna start with, again, what classification setup and what they do in this setup. We have our input image and our output work, what again, and how do we do this? On the output, we are not taking this word like as a sequence. We just take this word as, as a class, okay? We have like the whole dictionary of all Ukrainian words or maybe like of all Ukrainian and English words Okay, I, I didn't show on this slide. Okay, uh, and like this, like this, not just multi-class classifications, it's like huge multi-class classification because we could have like almost like, mm, I don't know, a lot of words, like thousand, like uh, hundreds of thousands. And like this were big and that was the first approach. Like we take our input se sequence, our input image, add some convolutional layers because we are working with images, it's better to use convolutions, like it's practically approved. And then we add some dense layers to make our classification. That was like one of the first setups and they had good results like for, the, for that time, it was 2015, like machine learning like was trying to do something and those people who were interested in text recognition were also trying to do something. But then <clears throat> AI sphere was developing and uh, people thought about like the other technique because like, okay, uh, what if there is no word? Uh, like uh, we don't have all the words in the world and it appears that some new word goes here and we cannot even classify it because we don't have class for this word. What we're gonna do then? Okay, so then uh, there appeared people who said, okay, but uh, how do people recognize the words? They see the letters and then the, the brain somehow merge these letters and create words and sentences. Okay, and how does it look like? Again, Oko. Then after we have our input word, input image, we have different classifiers for each letter. Like we created a lot of classifiers for all al alphabet, like for all Ukrainian alphabet. 
And so it's okay because we already know how much letters are in our alphabet, like 33. And also we add recognizers for some uh, digits. And then we just train it to find out the place of these letters and uh, to find out, like, to find out on the image those letters. And after that, we have like the positions of these letters and the classes of these letters, and then we somehow match this. The main problem here is that when we have these uh, letters, we need to somehow match it, in, and that's like pain of this method. And people thought how to improve this. Like, okay, like we have here also label. People thought how to improve this, and they found out some new methods, like, because we cannot stop on something like that. And before we gonna dive deep into these methods, we need to define some, uh, some uh, terms. And let's start with the codec. What is codec? Codec is the ordered sequence and it is the sequence of all letters we're going to recognize. I need to define it because like, we not only use all letters that we want to recognize, we also use symbols and also use uh, uh, digits and also we use blank symbol. I need to tell what is blank symbol. Blank symbol is simply for defining those regions where there is no word. You will say like, but what does it say about this uh, thing? Like there are a lot of places where there is no word. It would be strange. But I will tell in the next method why do we need this blank symbol. Like it's better to understand on the exa example. The other definition we need to define is time step. That's strange naming, but like I didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't find out it, like it was just uh, given to me, like, okay, timestamp. Timestamp is like, you have this input image, and then you think, what about dividing this image into zones, like that. Like, you divide this image into these small pieces, like these small stripes, and each of these stripes is called timestamp. And like you can then do something with this uh, small stripes, uh, like I will tell you next. Okay, so and again, you need to remember this is codec, this is blank symbol, this is timestamp. Yeah, this is important. Okay, so now learn my example. This is codec again, but we're not gonna use it. <laughs> Why we not gonna use it? Because like for example purposes, like in our presentation. I will use only codec which will consist of three letters. Like, not three letters, like two letters, OK, and, and blank symbol. Why am I going to do that? Because all examples I will show is going to be this word OK, which consists only of two different letters and blank symbol. So, like, it's only for example purposes because if I would use all this codec, it would be like, on the whole slide, a lot of letters which wouldn't be used and it would be nice. Okay, so let's go to the modern approach. <sighs> modern approach looks like this. We have our input image, like as before, and what we want to predict? We want to predict the distribution of our letters on the whole width of our image. Isn't this cool? Because like, we define the idea of this timestamp and we want to define at each, like, each small stripe of the image, we want to find out what is on the image. Like, we go from left to right and we find out like the, like, the most of the time it's only blank symbol, like probability one is that this space is blank symbol, then we have the probability of one of what, letter O, then K, then K, and then also O, and space. Yeah, and in that way we can easily find out that it's really word OCO. Like, and that's not so hard, but you will ask how do we implement this thing, because like, okay, that's cool that we can 
do the abstraction that's like only distribution of the letter on the whole width of the word, but how to implement actually in the code this. Okay, so, and I would say it's pretty easy because we already defined timestamp, uh, time step, and we can divide our image into these time steps and we can enumerate them, like from left to right we have here 12 uh, time steps, but I just, for example, made them pretty big, but, uh, but in real case it would be like smaller ones, like to make them more and then to, to have better accuracy. And then you, from that distributions before, you find out that here we have space, space, O, O, space, K, space, K, space, O, O, space. And we have something like that, like I just stripped this line like left space and right space just to not mess up with that thing. But how do we find out from this thing that it's OCO, not something else, and we don't have here like two O's or like how do we need to know it? Like how will we find out? And I would say that like we would do that in the next way. We have our two letters that are gonna be one O, space would be collapsed into nothing, K would be collapsed into K, again space into nothing, K into K, space into nothing, O into O. So what we did here, we basically did something like collapsing of the same letters. When you have like uh, not stopping sequence of the same letters, you collapse them into one letter. Like here we collapse two O's into one O, and here again two O's into one O, two spaces into one space. Ba basically we just get the space out and case into just case because they were just single case. Okay, so like, and we found out that our like uh, final output is OCO, what we wanted to find out. So, what's next? How to implement this help? Because like still we don't know how, how to do this because I, I just show something, okay, O, K, K, O, but neural network doesn't know what is Lattice, it just uh, speaks about numbers and uh, we need to show something how to do that. And uh, what we have, we spoke about these distributions like back in the past. We spoke about this distribution of the lattice uh, on the whole image. And uh, we can speak about it like about the sequence and the input image also about the sequence. But uh, the actual output of our network would be not the, se like, it would be the sequence, but it would be the matrix. Like, also, we can speak about that as a sequence, but actually it would be the matrix of the, the sizes, like on the x axis we would have time steps, and on the y axis we would ha have our codec our uh, lattice and a blank symbol. And we would have something like that. Like, uh, it's our uh, distribution and it is our representation in probabilities. Like, here we only have uh, strict probabilities because like, here we have like actually one, but in real life it would be something like uh, for O 0.01, and for blank symbols like 0, 99 uh, or something like that. It, it wouldn't be so, so great and so great accuracy in real life. It would be just some, some mess a little bit. But what I wanted to say that the output of our neural network would be this matrix, matrix that for x axis we have time steps and at each time stamp we have the prob distribution uh, probability distribution on the our alphabet. Or we can speak about this like uh, during all widths, we have the distribution of this symbol here, like one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, like changing values, and of K and of O. Like we can think about this like about vertical lines or about horizontal lines. Who thinks it's better? K 
can use it in that way. The other thing I need to, to mention before we uh, dive into ar architecture is normalization. Because you have this input image, for example, madly good image, and you have it of different size, like any size. But for a neural network of recognition, like in the localization, you could have images of different size, like for risk. But in localization, you cannot have images of different size because it would be totally messed up. You need to, to make it strictly to something. Okay, like, let's start. That's our input image is like of any size. In our example, it's like height high of 1,000 and something and width of 5,000 and something. What first we need to do? We need to make it to grayscale. Why we need to do that? Because like for text recognition, the color in most cases uh, doesn't bring any new knowledge about the text that it's on the on image. Like, and that's why we make it gray. Like here we have three channels, like uh, colorful image, and here we have just gray image. The next step, very important step, we need to resize it. But how do we know uh, to which size we need to resize? Uh, as I said before, neural network have to, oh, it has to have some uh, one strict parameter like or, or of two sizes, like, and we are gonna fix the height of the height of the input image. We would say 32. Does someone have any ideas why 32? Our input image going to be 32. Because it's power of 2? Yeah, like that could be one of <laughs> variants. Uh, 64. Uh, why not 64? Like, 16. Yeah. Mm. I don't know, actually. <laughs> like, uh, uh, the explanation in the paper, like, uh, anybody could write something like that, is uh, it's like minimal, uh, minimal uh, uh, size of the image when the text is still readable enough. Like, something like that. And again, it's power of two, like, everybody loves power of two. Um, uh, and what about the width? We have our input image and we don't want to uh, squeeze it or like uh, enlarge it in one of the sizes. We want to, to uh, how it's called, uh, to, to use the aspect ratio of the image so it doesn't change its look. But uh, actually also we cannot just uh, take the aspect ratio of the image like for uh, any image because it's also going to be mass and there would be images of different widths. But we need to train our network and we need to put images, this, this patches, this cut images. We need to put it, okay, we need to put it into batches to make neural network learn something faster. Because like in most cases, uh, as always already said, we need to, to make this uh, by batch size like 30 or something like that because if you take only one image per one back propagation and forward pass it would learn very very slowly or even it would wouldn't learn like any any way because it, it, it gonna uh, it gonna learn inconsistently okay so that's why we choose these sizes for the width like 54, uh, 80, 124, 182, 272. Okay, this like uh, different widths. And by this width, we approximate the, the width of our real image. Like, okay, so uh, we have this input image, okay, Mably. We say that this height needs to be 32. And we find out from this set of widths which widths will uh, will fit our image best. And okay, like for this image, Mably, we found out that uh, one 
82 is the best case, the, base, the best fit. Okay, at this step it's okay. We have our image resized, we have our input like one of uh, our input image of 32 by one of the set predefined here. And what we're gonna do at the last step, we need to normalize and back, sub uh, back subtract. Uh, do back, sub back subtraction. How do we do this? Like in most cases in uh, computer vision tasks, when you work with images, like uh, you need to normalize your data. You know that in images, all values are like from 0 to 255. But for neural network, it would be better when values would be from 0 to 1 or from minus 1 to 1. Because like it's smaller range and all values are normalized. This is about normalization and better training. And also we need to back subtract. What's about the back, back subtraction? It's also known in computer vision when uh, you want to subtract the background from the image, like approximately to subtract the background of the image, you just take the mean value of the, on the whole image, the mean value of pixel, and then just subtract from the whole, uh, from the whole image, subtract this value. So in that way, you basically subtract this background, and in most cases it works, like here you can see, like the input image is uh, very good, but uh, you can see that uh, from input image we have pretty strict borders of our letters that is called for our neural network to learn from. Okay, let's go to, to the next step because we, we wasted a lot of time here. How, how uh, to implement this how? Like, the question stands again and we need to answer it, so let's start. We have our input sequence like from the, uh, f any size, no, not actually any, we already said it would be 32 by some kind of width, but we don't know what width would be, and it would be different one from 10, and, okay, yeah, and we have the output. We have uh, also the sequence, and what is the thing about that the input could be like 52, for example, and the output could be, for example, 05, or 06, or 04, like we don't know. It could be like different for different words. And what in most cases people use for this task, people use recurrent neural networks. Why the people use recurrent neural networks? Because they the idea of recurrent neural networks is that uh, using these networks you can predict uh, for different sizes uh, for different sizes inputs you can predict different outputs like different sizes outputs like the idea is pretty simple that uh, you put like the first part, part of the image and have the first part of the output you then put again you have the information from this part and you put again the next part of the image, like the next slice of the image time step, and you have the information from, from the previous time step, and you have again the output. And you have now information about two, output, uh, two inputs, and again you put the third slice, the third time stamp into the neural network and have the third output. And like then so on, so on. And, uh, and, uh, different parts of these outputs could be like uh, empty symbols, like just, uh, I don't know, j j just uh, saying, okay, there is nothing to output, but most of them would be letters or something like that. So using this re uh, recurrent neural networks, you can actually, uh, from different widths input, like 52, you can actually find out different widths outputs, like five or six or four, because like those who are not used would be just blank symbols. But people were developing the ideas and were trying different approaches. And actually in last years, people said uh, like, these recurrent neural networks are really hard to train because like there are a lot of mass around this, uh, 
skip, con uh, not skip connection actually, but this uh, uh, propagating of the information, so on, so on, so and so forth. And when you propagate it, there are a lot of problems, like uh, uh, your gradient could explode and something like that. Like there are a lot of uh, problems with this back propagation, and there are a lot of uh, approximations and. Uh, improvements but actually they are really hard to train like it takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, money okay just <laughs> like because you need a big GPU to train everything like this and then people said okay but actually people find out that using CNNs you can also do something like uh, sequence uh, sequence uh, problems like uh, you can also find out the connections between different slices of the image and uh, it also would work uh, pretty good as RNNs, recurrent neural networks and what we're gonna use like uh, always didn't say before like is called fully convolutional neural networks it doesn't consist any fully connected layers or any other layers it just consists of all convolutional layers yeah, so we have our architecture part done. Now there is another question. How to make this machine learn something? Like, how do we make this machine learn that, okay, that you have O here, O here, K, K here, O, O. Like, uh, you know what I'm uh, trying to say is that our problem is something like that. We have our input image and we have label that it's OCO. But we don't have that this label is OO, KK, OO. Like we don't have this uh, labeling at each time stamp. And some people would say, okay, we can approach this problem like by simply labeling each this time step. But what if people would say, okay, we need to change this time step. We need to make it smaller so our accuracy would be bigger then someone would would need to stand again and to label this word at each time step but you understand this list. like for big word like uh, the width of the image could be 182 the number of these time stamps could be like 300 someone need to uh, someone need to label this word like from left to right, 3,000 timestamps, it would be painful. And you're not gonna do this because like, you would hate yourself after three hours labeling 10 photos and in, it w wouldn't give much results. But what we're gonna do, we would use something called CTC, Connection Temporal Classification Loss. As all, all, all is already said, uh, neural networks are mostly about losses and not about architectures. Okay, about architectures and about losses. Because if we have a good loss, loss function, the function that trains our neural network, we would gonna have better results. Ah, okay. we can because we have blank space between those two k's and that's why it knows that those are two different no. letters uh, no I get it I, I didn't mention like the idea is at this step uh, like right now I'm speaking about the training phase when you have uh, your input data set and you have the uh, here you have the the photo and you have the label when you know it's, it's, it's what you like yeah Again. So we have like so we divide we into we know the number of how we divide the image and we know the label. And we, when we are training for this particular image, we create a matrix of all possible combinations. How can we uh, like we have cloud labels and we create all possible combinations? If we merge it, we will have the point. So this is just not the full thing. Okay, let's go on because like, 
be a shape sometime. Okay, so uh, at this step we we know this procedure and we repeat it for every uh, single photo in our dataset and we let's imagine that we already trained our network in uh, using this procedure. And how to decode this output? Like what I'm speaking about, like we have our input matrix and we need somehow to decode the output. Z the most simple way to decode this output like from this matrix is to take ergmax. Like uh, at each time step, time step, we would take ergmax. What's simply about is like uh, when you take it first step, ergmax would be like uh, the index of the maximum value, it would be like the index 2, like from up is 0, 1, 2, it would be like the index of blank space. And like at this timestamp, at this timestamp, it would be the index of O. Like, okay, it's just like simple. And is it always correct? Because like in most state of the art approaches, they just use our marks, but I would say it's not always correct and it's not always the best way. But it's the easiest way to take work marks like the most people do this. But I would, I would uh, prove you why it's not always correct. We have this example. We have the photo of text O. I just written the photo of text because like, I didn't have time to do this also. And um, then we have our neural net, and then we have output matrix, like everything like, like, like before. And at this step, we don't know that this is the, the photo of text O. We need to predict it. We have our matrix, 3 by 2, here is it. And we have these probabilities. And here, not all of them are ones and zeros, like the normal, the normal phase of of predicting. And what would be the output using our argmax method? It would be like a blank symbol and blank symbol and what it would be like the probability of blank blank would be 0 0.36 and our output would be when we strip it, it would be bl uh, simply blank symbol like uh, our neural network says that there is nothing on the image, but uh, we would say, okay, like the evaluation phase failed because our neural network says there is nothing on the image. Like we done everything wrong, like go home. Uh, <laughs> this method is called best pass method when you took, uh, take argmax at each time step. And let's speak about the actual situation. Let's take all possible combinations that we have uh, on this matrix. Like we would start with one O space, like the probability of O space would be 0 0.4, 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.6. Then space O, 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.4. And then O, O. 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.4. Then the other uh, one of the all outputs would be our blank blank. What is 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.6? What gonna be 0 0.36? And then all possible combination with k's, but the probability of k like at each timestamp is zero. I just didn't write all these combinations. Like it would be. Uh, uh, that would be three. Uh, okay, S l like I just didn't write it down because all possible combinations with k would give us zero. But what we need to mention here is that like uh, when we collapse and strip, the probability of O blank is the probability of O. Probability of blank O is also the probability of O, and the probability of O O is also the probability of O. Like we need to sum this up. And when we sum up, we have the, the probability of O appearing on the image is 0 0.64. That is like much bigger than 0 0.36, which we said before. So we are doing something wrong. 
and uh, basically here I'll just show all possible combinations. But when we have uh, the big number of timestamp, for example, 100, you're not gonna do this because it would be uh, a lot of a lot of combinations, and uh, there are approximations to finding out the best path. Is one of these methods is this beam search method, but I'm not gonna do this right now. I'll speak about it because like there are some theme about algorithms, uh, and you can uh, read it like later. Like, because there were some different... Okay, like, somebody will may know this algorithm from any other sphere, but I'm not gonna speak about this right now. Okay, and we basically uh, come to the fifth part of our talk about datasets. And what about datasets? That's the situation about datasets. That's like the most uh, famous data sets in the sphere of text recognition and text localization. And as you can see, there are not much of the images in these data sets. You only have like uh, almost 500 images, like in ICDAR of 11th, 13th and 15th years uh, at all, like uh, summed up. And it's like only 2000 words in this data, data set. And you have the other data set much simpler. It's street view text data set, very simple data set when you look at it. Uh, and it has only up to 400 images and only up to, uh, to 1000 of words. And that's only the situation for English data sets. And what about Cyrillic datasets? The idea is that there are absolutely no datasets existing right now. And we were just, I don't know, disappointed about this situation. Like, again, problems, like we have very deep neural network. We have no Cyrillic dataset. And we need to uh, approach 78 accuracy, like, to be at the state of the art approach. Like, we cannot do this, like, with this setup. So, what we decided to do, that's time for synthetic data. And what about synthetic data? Uh, we should be thankful to these guys from Visual Geometry Group. They also created VGG neural network, like, they're doing a lot of stuff at University of Oxford. And what they do? They created two papers. One paper was about creating synthetic data for text recognition task. It was the first one. They started with it because like, we need synthetic data because we don't have any data at all. I would speak about it like one slide after it. And the other data set, it was a synthetic data set for text localization. And it was more sophisticated than the first one. I will ta uh, tell you why. Okay, so let's start with the synthetic data set for text recognition. How do we do the synthetic data? First step would be font rendering and uh, choosing what word, what word we want to, uh, to take for our synthetic uh, synthetic uh, image. Okay, so uh, basically uh, after we found out what word we want to choose, like we found out that we want to choose word OCCO, we then take uh, randomly one of uh, 2000 fonts which we took from Google Fonts uh, API, from Google Fonts site, and we have like a hell of bunch of different uh, uh, different uh, fonts, like uh, which gives us uh, a, a, a big variety of fonts. The next step would be uh, creating three layers. Why do we need three layers? Because uh, we want to separate this all different distributions, like probability distributions, uh, to make them independent. Like we independently choose the color of background then we independently choose the color of 
outline of the image and the probability of whether this, uh, this image would have outline or wouldn't have outline. And the third layer is uh, basically the color of the, our font. Then we compose it everything together into one layer. It would look something like this. And then the next step would be add some projective distortion because basically you, uh, on the images you wouldn't face the words uh, standing something like this, like basically ideally horizontal, like perfect. But you would uh, face something like this, projective distort, projective distort uh, words. And so we randomly add this projective distortion to make it more realistic. And the final step, which I like the most, is that we randomly crop uh, the images from big data set, which doesn't have any text in it, and then blend our text into this photo. And like the final results are pretty good, and I'm gonna show it right now. So we done our experiment with this uh, approach and we took this data set. We needed to take some data set for uh, uh, sampling our words, uh, our text, and we took Uber Corpus, which has like uh, eight gigabytes of text, is pretty much, and uh, we filtered that data set to have only Ukrainian words and digits, uh, and then we started sampling, started doing synthetic. And we got something like this, like, as you can see, oh, okay, like that's not the all variety of examples, but we had a lot of different data sets and like, it looked something like this. Like we generated two million photos, like that's pretty good for training of our neural network. It takes a lot of time to train one epoch, okay, but- ask one question? Yeah. What is the minimal uh, amount of photos needed to Oh, like, I don't know, like, uh, uh, in our task, I guess, we started with uh, 100,000, like, the first sampling, uh, uh, sampling testing phase was, we just sampled one, 100,000, we would say about this, because we were optimizing the code for this generation, because it was awful, and uh, first we optimized it a little and it took a lot of time to generate that 100,000 and then we optimized it much greater and then we generated two millions because like why not we can how much time did it take uh, to, to, to train to generate to train ah to train uh, one epoch one hour one epoch uh, one epoch like uh, one epoch is like uh, uh, one time you go through the whole data set. Okay, like, uh, uh, the process is, is, of training looks like uh, you go through the data set, do forward pass, do back propagation, and then in that, in that way, uh, way the parameters are optimizing. Okay, so one hour it took to go through the whole data set, one time. Yeah. We do maximum 24 epochs, but after 10th epoch, it was it didn't give, uh, give much more results. Okay, so let's speak about a synthetic data set for text localization. Synthetic data set for text localization, it's much harder to create, and does somebody have any ideas why it's much harder to create? Yeah, basically that's the idea. Like uh, to generate synthetic data, like we cannot just put it and randomly distort. Uh, those guys from VGG group found out the new way, the good way uh, to generate it because they uh, have already papers for, for it. They already knew that there are technologies that would help to do that. What we're gonna need to generate synthetic data for this? We have our input image, and the first thing we're gonna need is geometry, geometry of this image. Like what I am speaking about geometry is just like uh, 
almost a 3D representation, but looking from our perspective, like I would say about that. Uh, then we have found out, uh, find out the same color zones in the image so that we can put our text like on the zone with the same color, not like with difference. Like we need to do some, uh, how it's called, uh, uh, Okay, we need to do some uh, segmentation, okay, yeah, uh, uh, some semantic segmentation. Then we need to find out from this geometry dense zones. So the surface on which we're going to put text would be the most smoothest one, like, and the, with the same, like, uh, surface. And then we need to choose the correct color of text, because if we put uh, the dark text on the dark uh, background, we wouldn't uh, see it and it would be impossible to read and we would train our network to try to read something there but it wouldn't be impossible, it would be mass. So, let's start with the first one, geometry. How do we do geometry? Geometry we do with the depth maps. What is depth map? Depth map is like, maybe somebody know, maybe somebody doesn't know, like depth maps is representation of the our input image speaking about that each pixel in the depth map is the distance to the pixels on the input image so basically as you can see here we have depth maps for for example for this image uh, you see there are trees here and there is uh, uh, ground and there is sky and it's like much more darker uh, where is ground because the value here is lower and if you, are, uh, if you know about the idea of images, lower values means uh, uh, more black uh, color and higher values means uh, lighter colors, like more white colors. So the idea is the, like the values here are low, so the distance to this ground is lower than the distance to this like white space because it's uh, the neural networks tries to uh, to find that uh, okay it predicts that uh, uh, it's very far, far enough from us, so the values uh, there are much higher, and the values of these trees are like something in the middle. So they are gray, something like that. Okay, so uh, those guys from VGG group took the ready solution. It's neural network for generating these depth maps from input image. And as you can see here, we have our input images. We have our ground truth. Ground truth is basically labels. They are taken with the uh, sophisticated uh, camera for taking depth maps. And their solution with like uh, unary only and fine tune, they have like uh, unary only, they have pretty good results as you can see, and fine tuned, they have really good results, like basically almost the same as the uh, ground truth. Like, okay, so we have this depth map, we have our geometry, like for our input image with a tent, we have this this example. And then we need to do the semantic segmentation. To do the semantic segmentation, they took another paper where people uh, found out uh, the new algorithm for creating semantic segmentations. It's like uh, they don't use any neural networks, they just uh, created the algorithm for doing this. And as you can see here, like this is the input image, this is some uh, like uh, steps of this algorithm and the uh, output image is on the right you can see that it's pretty good results we are okay with it and for our example it's also okay um, so uh, we have this segmentation and we have uh, our final result. We got the geometry of the image, we got the segmentation, and we got the zones which we can use. As you can see here, some zones are colored and some are, are just like from the input image, so we cannot use them. 
like here, here, here. Okay, so we have our zones, we need to put text here. But what stops, uh, stops us from the last step, putting text on it? We need to know the color uh, which the text need to be to, to be put and to be recognizable by people and by neural networks, like to, to work good. And those guys, I really like this step because they took another data set where you know the color of the background, like from which you can find out the color of the background and the color of the text. Basically, this data set is like 5K word data set. It consists only of images of cropped text. And this text is basically from the natural, from text in the wild, actually. But they didn't label actually the text, they labeled the masks of the text. So you can find out from these images, if you have like, for example, background gray, uh, you need to have white, white uh, word uh, to make it readable and something like that. And that's pretty good. So we took everything that I spoke about and we had something like this, like this result. As you can see here, I really like it. You have a uh, yellow word on the blue background. What is cool because like we have this yellow stripes and it really looks natural. But this words on the ground, it's, it's not so good. But actually you can fine tune something and say that I don't want to put words on the ground, basically, and that's okay. We, for this task, we couldn't uh, have a lot of images because like those code for depth map generation was really mass written on MATLAB. And uh, basically we are Python guys, we are not uh, for MATLAB. So we, uh, because we needed to, 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 to go through it and we didn't have basically time. And they proposed the data set with uh, 8,000 images with ready depth maps and color segmentations. And you just take this data set of 8,000, it's pretty strange because like there are strange things in this data set, but it's okay for us. And we take our Uber corpus with eight gigabytes of text data. And we have results like this. I really like this one because like the word is written on the, on the person's face. Yeah. And sometimes there are words on the ground, which are really, uh, uh, really looking, but like nobody puts words on the, on the ground and on the, uh, on the blue sky, but why not, why not? Okay. And what about testing data set? Because we have training data set, as I said, we generated synthetic data, a lot of data for training our neural network, but we need some test data because like you cannot test your neural network on the synthetic data because actually you will get good results, but that's not about that. Those results would be like biased to that distribution of the, uh, of the data set. So, we thought, why not mine some data? We also can. And our assumption was pretty interesting. Always had an assumption that if you, uh, there are people who are posting everyday photos to Instagram, Facebook, and something like that. And the assumption is that like poop, uh, people put tags on those images, locations, basically. They put locations. And if we take the locations of the restaurants, cafes, and something like that, uh, there is pretty big probability that when people take a location, for example, Silpo, uh, there would be the name of this place on that image. And that, uh, that is everything we needed to have. Like, we needed these photos, like with these tags, this text, it's really text in the wild. That's what about, uh, our assumption. And we thought, why not to do that? We took Foursquare. Uh, what is Foursquare and why? Like, uh, maybe somebody doesn't know. Foursquare is a service for uh, creating reviews, 
something like TripAdvisor for creating reviews of different places and it really has a big database of places and a big database of photos of places because they, I don't know, have some communication with uh, Instagram and they have a lot of photos from Instagram. And that's basically cool because they have APIs for this and we don't need to mess with Instagram, we can just do this in here. And okay, we have our map of Ukraine and we want to scrap all the data from the map of Ukraine. Basically not from the map of Ukraine, from Ukraine location. And how are we going to do this? Uh, the API provides us with something like this. You say, okay, I want uh, this location longitude li li latitude or I want this location uh, Lviv. You say Lviv and it says you all the places uh, as it's written in documentation. But basically there are not only 20 restaurants in uh, Lviv. It's uh, like lies a little. And we need to, to, to make a workaround around this. We again have our map and we put it into rectangle just like as every Ukrainian would do, like put it in a rectangle and put it on the wall. Um, not... <laughs> uh, not... Uh, okay, we just put it into rectangle because we need to divide it into small squares. Into small squares uh, and it's really pretty national. Okay, so uh, into small squares and then when you divide it into small squares, we will uh, uh, make calls to the API saying, okay, I have the square from longitude, latitude this point to longitude, latitude, longitude, latitude to this point. And uh, it would give you results and the results would be uh, much greater because when you make this uh, square pretty small, uh, it would give you really all the restaurants on this place. And that's okay. But let us calculate. If you have that, like the coordinates of the uh, southern western part of Ukraine, and this is the coordinates of uh, northern eastern part of Ukraine. So when you do the math, you will find out this like uh, the, the the sides of the square of the Ukraine rectangle of the Ukraine. And if you take the step, for example, one, uh, zero, zero, 001, you will do the basic math and you will find out that we will have one million squares. That's pretty much. And what is the problem here? Because we can do only 500 calls per day. Uh, it would take a lot of time. And we thought, okay, let's Google something like this. The list of cities of Ukraine, we are very national, we like love Ukraine. Okay, so uh, in CSV, in CSV, uh, e, and we have like the list of cities, what I wanted here, just the names of the cities. Then having the names of the cities, we can uh, find out from first square what are the centers of cities and what are the like the lowest uh, left coordinate and the uh, rightest uppest coordinate. And we have like the list of the cities, for example, three cities, but we had almost all of them, I guess, a lot of them really. And they, the problem here is uh, still we, we have a lot of area that we wouldn't take any data from it. Like, uh, I don't know, but I guess in, in, in this square or here, we wouldn't have a lot of restaurants, cafes and something like that. We would make just uh, empty guesses, like just playing, I don't know, uh, when you play ships with your friend and you just guess where it could be. But actually we know that there were a lot of restaurants in the center of the city. So the steps were the next. We take the Lviv, take the center, and we have the center of the city. And when you take only the center of the city, like you create some square of the center of the city, and then you just need to know 
only the right number of squares you want to divide this big square into. And we took 10,000. That was okay for us. And doing this so, such way, we found out 38 places, and it was okay, why not? And then we needed to do the next phase. We take place, take place, uh, put it into the API, and have a lot of photos. But there is only one problem here. Estimated time arrival is 20 days, which is not, again, okay, but what can we do with it? We can do basically the next thing. We can start junior scraping tutorials on Foursquare. Uh, what we need to do, uh, as I said before, I have only one account at Foursquare, and I have like 5,000 or 100 uh, calls per hour uh, and 5,000 limitations per day or something like that. I don't know. Or it's like uh, when you put your credit card into it, it would give you a little bit bigger amount. But it's still not okay. And what we're going to do, we're going to make use of our friends surrounding us. We will open github.com, search for square uh, under dash key, key, and just copy a lot of keys. <laughs> Yeah, there are a lot of <laughs> kids, uh, like, when you do something like them, uh, you, you can find really some, somebody's Facebook accounts uh, or something like that. Yeah. And still, it, it said that it would take five days, like, like, if you just take this account and then just put it in your, like, uh, continuous process, it would take five days. And I just said, no, 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 make it work faster. Uh, but Oli said, no, no, you can still wait five days. Uh, I said, no, uh, I, I will do it m work faster because if you want to, to scrap like the other country, we would wait again like 10 days and it would take much more time. So what? So what? At Async EO, if you know, like, that's like uh, for making uh, asynchronous requests, uh, HTTP request. Uh, so, you, like, you wouldn't wait for each request, you just put it into pool, and when it's ready, it would say, and you would process it. Then create credentials balancer, like, to, to balance this um, different credentials, because some of them really had, like, I get paid plans, because, like, it had a lot much requests than I had, and that was pretty interesting, and then just relax, just wait. And in two days I got output of 50,000 raw photos. I really needed to wait two days because I couldn't get more credentials. If I could have more credentials, I, I would have more, more photos. But uh, yeah, it, it was okay, it was okay. Like I was writing code like two days, and I could wait two more days. Okay, and next step, so what we're gonna do next. We have this all photos scrapped, as I said, 50, 100, and we, oh, 50,000, and we need to do something next with it, because like, uh, uh, okay, we have photos, but we don't have any labels. We would put our photos one by one into our baseline model, and would create some predictions based on it. And what we are gonna have as an output, we filtered those photos that have only text on it and found out what text is on it using this baseline model. But as we know, our base model, baseline model isn't the best one. It just has some mistakes. And what we needed to do next, we're gonna need to use Supervisely. It's the service where you can put your data set, then they will just copy it and I guess share someone, but you don't know it. Uh, you just put your data set into there and you can share it with your friends and you can uh, together label it, like just, just, uh, just, just pain. Just pain because like, uh, as all is already said, uh, you need like, like to, to put here, 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 
point here, 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 and then you need to reload the page because it just stopped working. But like, um, yeah, strange things happening. You need a lot of time to label the data set. Like, if somebody done this before, you will know that like it's really hard. So, and the other point is like, uh, I would call this slide more, uh, I don't know, fun even because like. Uh, all this was uh, labeling the data set, I was writing the code. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and always, always, uh, always stopped me from writing the code and said, and look at this. And I said, what's going on? And like the, the, the smallest amount of the photos was like, when you see something like this, there's like false positive photos of our that baseline model and it found out some word on it. Like the big word, I don't know like what happened with this. But that's about false positive examples. And something like this. <laughs> Somehow we got into Belarusia and found the photo of this. <laughs> what word found there? I don't know. Like, uh, actually I could find, find out what was the place where we found it, but I, j I just didn't want this because, like, you never know what you will find find out there. Okay, so, and what about our model, actually? Uh, about our model, we really had some positive results. Like, this, that's not the final our model. It was, like, uh, pretty, uh, like, uh, Two more versions before, but it, it it gave good results. Like we have Jiraina found out, Petna, Voda, but this image is really very good looking, and it's easy to find out. But there are like this image is hard one because like, you have a lot of words one by one, and actually it tries to, to to do it correctly, but not always. And here you have like when it uh, when the text localization network goes wrong recognition network goes really mass. Like here you can find out that this word is really something strange. But that was the problem of recognition net, uh, localization network, the first Olis was speaking about, that was YOLO. But uh, if we take EAST, it would give much greater results, but I will show it on the demo because we didn't just prepare faults. And what about accuracy? Actually, we couldn't compare uh, our network to the current state of the art network because our intersection with that data set was only in Latin. B but we were trying to train our model on Cyrillic and Latin. And they trained their model on the uh, number of languages that have small intersection of, uh, of the same letters. So it was like easier for them. But our intersection, like we have a big intersection when you have uh, uh, letter O, letter K, letter M, they are the same, almost the same in English and in Ukrainian. And that was the problem. But we got these results like, like uh, uh, the previous state of the art got the same results. So we are at, at this point, we are okay. but but. Like at the next steps, we need to, to make it greater. And what about negative results? Uh, speaking about the state of the art current approach, they also have this problem. We just basically cannot uh, predict this vertical text because the, uh, I don't know, the, the idea of this vertical text is basically like the other nature of this text. It's written like, uh, by letters from up to bottom and we are predicting our word from left to right and we need to do some changes in architecture and with current architecture we cannot predict this in that way. If it would be the word that is written vertically and then the angle is like something like this would be like, I don't know, a minus uh, 80 then we, will, we can predict this word. But when the word is written in this nature, it's really mass about this word. And what about the pains? 
So we will talk a little bit about, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, so uh, about like other pains that we have. So all in all, uh, so here is an example from a uh, quote of senior researcher scientist at DeepMind. For example, he is his, his GitHub repository that is generating this uh, synthetic data. As you see, uh, he in his GitHub put it, uh, for example, special version of five games that you need to uh, build. Uh, he also put here uh, like some uh, as a hash file where you have like absolute pass to his clusters and other things. And like all in all, so this code, it, and all code is all done in one file that has like 1,227 lines. So all in all, we need to somehow to work with this code. Uh, also, he used uh, an old version of uh, OpenCV, so we need to some part, so we rewrite it to a new one and uh, update it. Uh, yeah, so the, there was like also a lot of pain because somehow to try those state-of-the-art approaches, we need to build a custom version of Kafka because that's guys uh, who were like uh, deploy using uh, the solution, they build their own cafe instead of existing ones. They have their own layers and own losses for that stuff. That's why Costa was like building all stuff. And as you see, their code also includes a lot of uh, ways, absolute ways to their passes. Uh, so, and yeah, so like they quite often use such a construction where first they put some data in the list and then uh, extract just first data elements. So the code is quite bad. Uh, so I have several examples of Couch code. So before optimization, this code work was working for four hours. And after optimization, it sta sta starts working four minutes. Maybe you have any ideas what, why it was so slow? Maybe there were some Python developers. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> they were using non-GPU or uh, they used Regex. Uh, no, that our final version was also like using Regex. So it's Python too. Maybe it will help. So okay. So the truth. So like, how do we debug? Here we just uh, try to measure the step like time between each of each operation, and we found that. This line where you open file and iterate it line by line works much more pure than you just load all uh, file in a memory at once. Because like when we have like 64 uh, gigabytes of RAM, we can do this. And I guess they also had something like this because if they use GPU, they would have 32 gigabytes but, of RAM. But the reason why they didn't like interest in it is that because they have like some cluster with several computers that I suppose uh, could spend like not four hours four hours for that, but with those clusters they spend like less time for that. And in when we rewrite those code, those code, we obtain like four minutes at all. We just read all lines in a memory and start iterating line by line, and it will be what was become much more faster. So another like example. So those guys, for some reason, they were, were using even for. Uh, for like converting image to gray, they use their own function, not like built in, in OpenCV, but decided to use their own function. That was really strange and we write it, but for example, they, another piece of code that takes us, uh, so before optimization it was like three minutes, but uh, uh, you need to do this for all of, for each of this uh, three million image, two million images that we are generating. And after optimization, uh, it took for us around 10 seconds. So, any ideas why? 10 seconds for one image or for two? For one. For one image. And then uh, it took like. Uh, maybe less. So like, like but much more or less. Like less than one second. Yeah, maybe less than one second. Any idea? With a pure image using the image library, and you decided. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. So this is like the first error. So the first error is that for some reason they first uh, have like their image as a NumPy array, then convert it to pure image, and and then at the end of the function they uh, transform it back to NumPy image. 
this is really crazy because you can like even with simple math you can do this resize operation by your own so this is like that doesn't make no, no sense and this like transfer operation can be a lot of time another issue that happens here uh, is really with spill so this spill so. operation is written initially on python and python as you know is quite slow so we just replace this resize operation to open cv and it starts performing much more faster at all so like basically this operation took two seconds per one image and then after optimization like just changing to open cv resize it took uh, uh, 0 0.1 second or something like that or less like much so there faster. is like quite a lot of pain with those data sets okay so thanks for Alex for supporting like this research a short uh, like and in case you have a like, question we also have a demo of our yeah. uh, final neural network that is combination of this localization part and uh, and uh, and the recognition part, we can show it to you, we can discuss it to you, and maybe... Like, how do you get it? Like, uh, I just, uh, because I, uh, for example, I wanted to divide it in the most small amount of this time stamps, for example, because to do less mathematics and less explanation. But uh, I needed to, to show this, like, uh, double O's and these spaces, so I just managed to do this in that way. So like here is like it's just only for an example. For an example, so like in ordinary, like when you are training, you, when you're having your neural network, you it's you are doing this uh, by your architecture. For example, like in case your input image has a width like 52, uh, you may assume that at each convolution it will reduce by two pixels. So like after 52, after one convolution, mm -hmm. it will have like. 49 like timestamp after one more convolution you have like 37 and like and as deep your convolution like neural network will be as lower you will have like your timestamp so you should somehow uh, find an optimal value because between a number of timestamp and a deep of deepness of your architecture it's a golden point yeah. Yeah. for example if you take ukrainian uh, letter she it's very uh, it consists from sure. she. Yeah. It consists from the the same three triple E. Is it uh, handled by your? Yeah, because like the idea of neural network convolutional neural network, uh, when you go, I cannot like have here. Oh, I had some architecture. I don't know. So like maybe I will try to give you a better understanding. So like, the idea is that. This timestamp not only have information about itself during oh, the, yeah. from the architecture, it also have like an information between his neighbors. As during like convolution, it somehow like co contain like cap cap reduce reduce. So like when you have only from from an example, it seems like you will have only this part of e like from of sh. But but uh, in, in real life, your like convolutions on the previous layer. Hand has captured some information from uh, neighbors. The neighbors, yeah, okay, the neighbors part. So this, like, this timestamps is just for an example, just to give you a feeling how, in ordinary, like, after like when you go deeper, you have like a more information about neighbors, and one of the reason why, uh, like, state of the art approaches. So we contacted one of the developers of this state of the art approach, and he, his assumption is so that. Somehow, during training process, our language, our like neural network, learns only not a uh, letter. What what is the what is that, of but that. also like some distributions that there is like cannot be like two vowel letters together, or they could be on, or three vowels. Like. So like his assumption, and basically in the last paper they uh, uh, say that uh, the neural network. They don't train it to find out the language. They uh, they train multi language like English and some other languages, Greek and some other yeah. And they say that somehow neural network uh, uh, train to to make English letters with English letters and like Greek letters with Greek letters. But they didn't make it to do that. They just give it like labels and it found out like created the language model, I would say. Okay. <coughs> uh, in case of English of, uh, with OCO, uh, did you apply uh, some uh, previous filtering algorithms uh, uh, 
before starting uh, the neural network. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Filter? The filtering algorithm? Uh, for filtering for whole image uh, to mitigate the noise. No, no, no. Like no. The, the, initial, the only transformation that we were doing was, was described over there. So you have an image and you uh, extract that. In, so like you do this like geometric normalization part, where you like uh, transform it to specific size, where you uh, reduce it to where you like subtract background and do other things. Oh, but uh, how about uh, optical noise? That, uh, no, so like we. It's a kind of noisy ground. Uh, so uh, ordinary, like our synthetic data set is generated in such a way that he is, uh, it includes, for example, some JPEG uh, noise uh, addition. So like we are saying our, uh, on, when we are like doing our synthetic data set, we are training, we are saying our JPEG images with several quality level that are selected randomly. That's quality why quality distortion. Yeah. So this is why our, level, our our neural network can learn work even if you have this uh, noise. But is it uh, more uh, effective than uh, uh, previous uh, filtration? I don't know. So like uh, that's yeah. the only reason why we do that because we want to really want end to end solution where we don't do as ma as much as low rule rule base as possible. Yeah. Um, have you tried to mix the synthetic data with the real data on the training phase? Uh, actually? Yeah, so yeah, we don't have so many data to, so like the idea was to, so we want to really know, the, so, so I, my assumption was that in case we, so we have only 600 images and in case we will use some of them uh, already for training, we will uh, somehow it will be not good as we we already had not so many images so let's let's keep all them to our so this like state of the art approach they use like in real images and we try to somehow to as we don't have so many images we try just to do it on synthetic data just to have a real experiments and real results uh, I've got one question regarding the um, uh, time steps yeah uh, uh, the, re uh, the reason I'm asking is um, the length of a single uh, letter in Ukrainian language uh, has uh, is different. For example, the letter E and the letter U uh, or uh, uh, these letters have a different length. And how does a uh, uh, time step uh, catch these uh, different uh, lengths of the single letter? So, uh, I would say like from this perspective as always uh, always already said like you have input image and with uh, like the idea that you have this image big and but shallow uh, it only has uh, three like if it's colorful it has only three channels but but when you go deep by the network the image goes like smaller like uh, the width and height, uh, height it goes smaller, but the number of channels goes like twice, 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 and then at this point you have really the small representation of your, your image. Basically, in our example, it's one height of 32 input becomes one, and the width uh, becomes like width divided by four. But the idea is at this point each of these uh, like uh, uh, steps has a lot of information about its neighbors, like almost about the whole image. So at each point, you're not having information only about this timestamp, but about the whole image you can have. Because like the convolution sums up, sums up, or like... Maybe one more question and we will uh, go to them. Can I ask? Okay, the, well, so two questions, okay. Okay, so... Yeah. Okay, so I uh, have two questions. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. Big question. Okay, I will uh, select one. So first of all, I would say that some of your examples don't recognize the real words. So for example, when you take the photos of uh, shops, yeah, like Silpo and other things, it's not the real words and it's not a real font at all because it's logotypes 
and there is no letters. What, it's what? a graphical, uh, it's a graphical element uh, which was transformed by designer. So but, it, yeah, but like that, that's something. Yeah, but like it works even for such cases. So like the idea of text in the wild is that you don't know the nature of text. Text. So you don't know whether it's like uh, put it on a piece of paper, whether it's like handwritten text, whether it's like some font designed by uh, by, by by a designer. Like the idea is that you want somehow as a, as a human, you saw like all those results in computer vision somehow want to uh, like uh, at least uh, be as good as human or even better. And like as you as human know that this like letters from some feature represent A, but not uh, like some other letter. And what we do from, we have like this bunch of fonts, yeah? 1070 and from there we want to find like this general structure or our neural network is find like general structure of letter a and we expect that and it, as, as our results show it doesn't depend on font now so it's much more depend on 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 on, on the nature of letters so you are like learning much more as we generate like different data we have like different data uh, we can I understand but uh, it's a bit mistake, you know, because you are recognizing image as a text. But okay, but like uh, this, this, again, the aim of so like we, you have. I, I understand. I'm, you I understand have this like real life problem, where like such text appear and you cannot do everything with it. I referring to the previous question about when some people are placing like seven, you know, yeah. and how to recognize is it text or is it uh, human. Uh, uh, so like you need to you mean like uh, yeah. a hand. So uh, it's a hard question. So uh, like even with dogs and so there is like here, the same example is for example with dogs and bagels. So you can write like write down in Google dogs and bagels, and you will found like a, a, a quiz where you need to detect whether like it's a dog or bagel. And for human, it's already quite hard. So like at this point we are not even on that step we can where we cannot like recognize all text. So uh, so like neural networks in OCR are not uh, good enough. And next will be like uh, to so we are not even in, on in human level where we can recognize whether it's text or not. Mm -hmm. And then will be this text when you mm -hmm. recognize. But the question is not. More deeper because when you're recognizing the logotypes and so on, it's not a real word. And the question uh, stays: how to recognize the first word when you have no libraries and you don't know is it real or not? And like under real words, what do you mean? For example, Oko, it's not a word; it's like a name. But you uh, read it when you see it. As a human. Yeah, but you can't translate it, so it's the different nature of I this. I think we can uh, continue this yeah. discussion after, yeah, yeah. So after like, the session. Uh, let guys uh, show you some demo. Yeah, let, let's sh like look on some demo and then... Uh, and then presents for uh, participants. Yeah, sorry, we already like maybe take too much time. Or no, it's okay. So let's take some image I don't know like here we already loaded one image when you have a lot of text on the image maybe it's poster even and it's like it found out something like this like uh, as you can see like uh, recognition neural network is pretty is pretty like um, doing a lot of mistakes if localization network isn't working good like in this case it found out that the first letter is e but here is no letter because it's just some some stick or something so, so the issue in this task is that your error is accumulating you have you can have like 90 percent of accuracy for text localization and 90 percent of accuracy for text recognition but in final model your error will be accumulating and in case one one neural network will make an error as you see there there will be other so like maybe try to load other image so that it yeah. works yeah. uh, 
Oh yeah, that's like that's about recognition part, uh, localization part. <laughs> okay, it's like that's one of the images that we have scrapped from uh, Foursquare. Yeah, yeah so and as you can see, is here is a problem. Like sometimes localization network stands somewhere in the middle because like. Actually, that part, we didn't train localization part, it was trained for English text and wasn't like trained more for Ukrainian text. So that's why it could be the problem here. It's like a question of how, when you are training this like multi-language setup, how to uh, combine those languages in a correct way. Because like you have like a lot of languages. Conf that's cool. And uh, uh, why you didn't transform the rectangle? What do, what do you mean? What do you mean? You you were talking about the tr uh, transformation of rectangles uh, to the surface, yeah. But uh, in your case, there is no transformation, so it's a question. Uh, it was about generating the synthetic data. Uh, okay. So it's like we mm -hmm. get in the results. Okay, just let, let's get one more example, I guess. So some of those errors can be corrected with some dictionary approach when you have like a word and you are looking for the word that is closest, it's closest to a way. But like we still measure our like, so all stages of, of the art approaches, they are how, somehow are tricky because after uh, when they like output this text, they... And this is a problem. Yeah, for example, if you... Yeah, this is a problem. But actually, I think it, it could f could found Kloop, but it didn't somehow. So but this is the problem. That's basically because of those time steps, right? Because it moves in, inside the rectangle. No, no, no. I, I am speaking about localization network. It just didn't. So here we already have like an issue with localization networks because yeah. our okay. text. Let's take some last oh, image. Thank you for your demo, guys. Okay. Okay. It was very cool talk. Let's <laughs> go.